In this video, we're going to talk about how to configure a virtual router in a Palo Alto. Now, a virtual router is, well, it's just that. It is a router similar to what you might be used to seeing in a Cisco or other network device. The great thing about how it works under Palo Alto is it's what's called a virtual router, which means you can have more than one. So you're not just buying a big, huge device that only can, can only support one routing table, but you're supporting a, or purchasing a smart device that can support multiple routing tables. What that means, say you work uh, in an area that has multiple organizations. Uh, like for instance, say we have lab one and lab two. Now something interesting about this organization or about these labs is that they all want to use the same IP addressing space, uh, such as the 10.00 slash eight. Now, basic rules of IP addressing tells us that you can't have more than one device with the same IP on the network at the same time. However, with the Palo Alto, what you do is you create virtual routers on each of these, and then you can assign routing tables and policies and configurations on those routers based on each of those labs or each of those environments. Because of this, not only can each lab have different policies and different security procedures, but they can also have different, uh, or I'm sorry, they can also have duplicated IP addresses in both of those virtual routers. Even though I'll probably only be configuring one or two routes, uh, virtual routers on a specific Palo Alto, this could scale to dozens, if not hundreds of virtual routers in your environment. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. In a prior video, we'd gone ahead and we'd configured the Ethernet IPs, uh, Ethernet 1 through 3, uh, all is layer 3. We've given them IP addresses, and we've assigned them all security zones. However, when we committed those air message, or those interfaces, we got a message saying that our, our interfaces did not have a virtual router assigned. So let's go ahead and create one. Still on the network tab, on the left-hand side, we're gonna scroll down until we get to virtual routers. Now there's a default router here already. I'm actually gonna just delete that one just to get it out of here for this example. And then I'm gonna say add. Let's create a brand new one. And I'll call this one, I don't know, lab one. And we'll start off by specifying which interfaces we want to include in this virtual router. So I'll say add and then specify our three interfaces. Uh, and once that's done, let's go to static routes. I'm using a static route. Uh, we could also be using one of these many uh, RIP, OSPF, OSPF v3, BGP uh, on the left hand side. But since I'm using a static, that's what my ISP has given me, that is what I will go with. So I'll click add. And I can name this route. Uh, I'll just call this my default route. A virtual router can have multiple routes defined in here. I just, I'm just going to have the one for right now. My destination is 0000 slash 0, which is kind of the Palo Alto's way of saying anything, anything that I don't already know of. And then the interface is the interface that I want to go out of. The next hop is going to be an IP address. We have uh, FQDNs, discards, nuns. I'm gonna say IP address. And then for the IP address, I'm actually gonna type in, I'm actually gonna say new, new address. Um, I've actually created one right there, ISP gateway. Um, let's actually try that again. New address. So here I would say ISP gateway. and then my destination 203.0.113.1. And I would say, okay. Uh, you notice that I don't necessarily have to add the slash 24 in here because I'm specifying a destination IP address, not a network. I had previously created that, so I'm gonna delete that, and then there we go. Uh, if necessary, I could include additional information here. I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. So, okay. And OK. Go ahead and click Commit. And once this is done, the default route will be set for those three interfaces for the, and for the zones that are attached to them. 
Now I'll click back to interfaces while that's still in committing. I could have also changed the default route right here. If when I clicked on the interface, uh, I also have a virtual router selection here. So I could have, uh, I could also click the drop down and change the interface at that point.